Hi, Brad MKHOU11 meteorologist Pat Cavan here in Houston, Texas with your Saturday, August 19th, 2023 tropical update. Now, typically during these updates, we only focus on the Atlantic Basin, but today we're going to focus on the Atlantic and the Pacific side just because of how unusual the situation in the Pacific is right now. And there it is. You may have heard of it. Hurricane Hillary right now, a category two hurricane as of the 7 p.m. update. Wind sustained at 100 miles per hour, moving to the north, northwest at about 7 miles per hour just off the Baja Peninsula there and expects to continue moving north into Southern California as we get into Sunday afternoon. So that's the expected landfall uh, for this system. The good news is that this storm has weakened through the day today and is expected to continue weakening as we go through the overnight notice by tomorrow afternoon. Winds will be sustained at 70 miles per hour, still a strong storm, but that's below the hurricane threshold. And then by the time it makes it into California, it will just be a tropical storm. That said, it's very unusual to get tropical storms in this part of the country. In fact, tropical storm warnings now up from San Diego all the way into the Los Angeles area. That's the first time that's ever happened in history, but it's not going to be a big rainmaker. It's not going to be a big storm surge producer. It's going to be a prolific rainmaker. Check out future track here as the storm moves north again, even though it weakens, there's still a ton of rain that falls out of the system, especially as it moves over the mountains. All that water gets squeezed out of the clouds as they hit those very tall mountains. And you're talking about big time rainfall totals here across the Inland Empire, which is the desert portion of Southern California. So a big swath here of rain from Southern California into Southern Nevada. In fact, some of the totals here, especially in that pink and purple, again, along the mountain ranges here, could exceed six to eight inches, which may not sound like a lot if you're watching me from Houston, Texas. But in these areas, I mean, in Palm Springs, again, which is out in the desert, they average about five inches of rain in an entire year. They could get that in just a 24 to 36 hour time period. So flash flooding, a big concern here from the southern deserts all the way up towards the Mojave Desert and into Death Valley. That's where Furnace Creek is. Uh, and Las Vegas also on the edge of this flooding threat with several inches of rain expected there as well. Okay, let's focus on the Atlantic because there's a ton going on out here. We've got three separate areas of interest in the Atlantic alone and a brand new tropical depression. The good news is that a lot of this not going to affect land. We'll show you that in just a second. But in addition to that, we also have a wave that we're watching here over the Florida Straits that has a 50 50 shot of developing once it gets into the Gulf of Mexico. We'll talk about that one in just a minute. But first, let's focus on all of the players on the board. Again, this is more of a wide view and we're going to narrow down the ones that we're actually concerned about in the Atlantic first. And it's really just the one here over the Antilles. We've got Tropical Depression 6, and then the next one is out in the middle of the Atlantic. Uh, these are the only three that at the moment are organized enough to run model simulations on. And you can see the one in the Antilles curves through the Caribbean and then eventually goes back out to sea. So that will be an influential maker, um, a weather maker for places like Hispaniola and other areas here in the greater Antilles. The one in the Atlantic that curves out to sea, that's just going to be an issue for the shipping lanes. And then Tropical Depression 6 expected to remain a tropical depression as it just kind of drifts across open waters here, eventually dying before it even hits the Antilles. So those storms we're not concerned about. The one off the west coast of Africa still has such a low chance of developing that we're not running model simulations on it yet. And then finally, the one that's in the Florida Straits that moves into the Gulf of Mexico, also still too disorganized at the moment to run any model simulations on. It's not until tomorrow night and Monday, especially Monday morning, that we start to see a little more organization with that. So there's New Orleans, there's Houston, and then here's Brownsville up in this area. So that just to get your bearings there, we're in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, and you can almost get the semblance of a little bit of a swirl here in the precip, right? So the center of the low would be somewhere in this area. Again, it's not organized at this point, but it does start to get more of an act together by Monday morning. Watch what happens though, as we go through the day Monday, the core of that rain, at least by this computer model simulation, stays just to the south of Houston. Bad news for Southeast Texas. Good news though for the Valley and for South Texas from Corpus Christi all the way towards the US Mexico border. Some beneficial rainfall. Remember all of the state pretty much in dire need of the rain. So why does it stay south though? Why does it stay south of Southeast Texas? That giant heat ridge that has been the big headline maker all summer long is playing a big role in Hillary and the potential development of this system in the Gulf. So there's Hillary on the model plot. 
There's the Gulf of Mexico system that we're watching, and then there's the heat ridge. Watch what happens here with Hillary first, gets caught up in the jet stream as it starts to arc over that heat ridge. That carries the moisture north in the Pacific Northwest. And then with our Gulf of Mexico system, that ridge, again, just close enough to us here in Southeast Texas, that it pushes that system south. It gives a really, really sharp cutoff to those rain bands across South Texas. I think we get a pretty good slug of rain down towards the Corpus Christi area, but we're gonna be fighting to get some good downpours here in Southeast Texas. Unfortunately, I think the ridge will keep that rain south. Now, if the ridge nudges just a little bit farther to the north, we could work in some more rain to the forecast, but right now, we're thinking maybe a half an inch of rain at best for pretty much the whole area. Best chance is the farther south you go, but really I'm not expecting much of anything. This is not gonna be a drought busting storm. So that's the latest in the tropics. Again, one named system out there, Tropical Depression 6. We're watching the latest with Hillary that's gonna impact Southern California as we get into Sunday and Monday. And then for us here in Southeast Texas, we'll be watching the latest on that storm system or that potential storm system, de system developing in the Gulf as we get into Monday and Tuesday of this week. All of this though, just a reminder, regardless of whether or not a storm develops, we are getting closer and closer to the peak of hurricane season.